Good afternoon. Welcome to Entrepreneurial Live Interviews with Connie Fuchsa. I interview people and I bring you guys these great interviews by people that I've gotten an opportunity to meet uh, throughout the world, honestly. Um, I've met through different people, different relationships, and I've met these people that have decided, have seen things that just felt like something needed to be changed in the world that we live in for whatever reason. However, they understood things to work a little bit differently and they decided to take a chance on an opportunity that they saw. And I love being able to share these amazing stories of these incredible hardworking people with you. And today I have the just absolute honor to be able to share with you a lady that has just an, an amazing amount of accolades. I can't wait to share her with you. And her story is just absolutely incredible. So today I want to introduce you to Sandra. Sandra, thank you so much for being with me out of all the way from Canada. I don't remember the city that you're in. Tell us about you. I'm here from Toronto and we just had a snowstorm yesterday, but Connie, I want to say thank you for this opportunity. And it was so great speaking with you in December. Uh, people, listen up. I'm saying this from the heart. Connie has some great services that she offered and just speaking to her very briefly and her, um, you know, giving me the benefit of her service. Uh, it feels like in an instant, but it wasn't. It was a lot of work on her part. She set me straight for the whole year. So I am now focused and determined and there's no question about the content I'm going to post and what I need to do. So I highly recommend her services. Oh, you're so kind. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. Yeah, we did get a little bit of a, um, a whirlwind of a connection and thank goodness to, we'll give a shout out to Jessica Koch who is, connected us, but we did, we did some really quick, intense, hard work and uh, got you a whole lot of um, a, a really great content. It all came out of you. I just sort of helped you structure it. So it was great. You were the time. catalyst. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, we had a good time. That was a lot of fun. And I learned a lot too. It was really cool. So it's so much fun. So Sandra, tell everybody about you. I want to know, I want you to share your story, share who you are, where you came from, how you decided to do what you're doing now. And, you know, some of the things that you went through the past that you've gone through and what are you doing right now? So tell us a little bit about your journey. <laughs> so uh, a lot of people know me as a television host with uh, HGTV shows, Property Virgins and buy herself. So Property Virgins is a show about first time buyers, first time home buyers. I'm a realtor, I'm a real estate broker actually. And in 2006, long time ago, they called me for an audition and I'm not an actor. So this was really, you know, this was like not something I had planned. So it's kind of a cute little story that I got a phone call. I was out back in those days, we had voicemail. We didn't have, you know, well, we did have smartphones, but we also had a landline. So I came back into the office and there was a message from some guy and he said, uh, hi, Sandra, my name is Dave. Call me at this number, please. And it was a weird phone call because it wasn't like, oh, I want to buy a house, I want to sell a house, or I saw your ad, or I want to talk to you about something. It was just his name and phone number. And it was that time of year, August, September, when everybody's trying to sell realtors tchotchkes for, you know, to give away to their clients, like calendars and whatever. And I thought, ugh. I don't want to call this guy back, but I also don't want to be that realtor that doesn't call people back. So I picked up the phone and literally picked up the phone and dialed <laughs> the phone. And I thought, ah, I'll just leave him a message. He's not going to pick up the phone, right? It's probably just going to try and sell me calendars. And I, I wasn't interested in calendars. So the person at the other end of the phone picked up, which I was surprised. Okay. It's going to go to his voicemail. And she said production and I went, ah, oh, see, it's a printing house. They're selling me calendars. I almost hung up, right? Ah, don't be that person. So I kept talking. Can I talk to Dave, please? I sounded like, like a really angry teenager, you know? <laughs> so then I will just leave a message and um, Dave picks up the phone. <laughs> I was like, what? Who picks up the phone? So he talked to me and he said, I'm calling you because we are creating a television show about first time buyers. It's going to be like a documentary. We're going to follow first time home buyers through their trials and tribulations. And I said, who would want to watch that? <laughs> 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 I had no idea. Like I had no idea how to make television. Right. And he actually laughed. He said, come on in for an audition. I said, nah, I don't really want to. He goes, come on, come on. You're going to be great. You know, we're just going to talk to you for a half an hour and maybe we'll put you on camera or whatever. And I said, okay. So I went down for this audition and it was in downtown Toronto and it was a rainy, drizzly day. And oh, yeah. my hair is naturally curly. Well, naturally frizzy. So <laughs> by the time I got there, my hair was like becoming this triangle, like a triangle. <laughs> right. I was not prepared. I wore a white 
clingy sweater. No, 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 no. You don't wear that on camera. I, they ended up putting me on camera. So we just started talking. I did everything wrong. You know, we just started talking and I'm getting very passionate about real estate. And that's what they wanted. They wanted somebody with a little bit of personality passion for their trade. So they pretended, to, they said, pretend we're buyers and we want to buy this space. We want to work work live space and it was this old loft right when warehouse lofts were becoming popular in the city mm -hmm. and it was on a very uh, well-known street and when i looked up i saw that the ceiling was made like this was a hundred year old building so wood slatted ceiling right not just your Ooh. drywall or plaster and i was like oh wow and i got really excited about it and they're looking at each other and then she's she look outside the window and you see another brick wall right and she goes yeah but the view you know really want a better view than this. I'm like, okay, you want work live, you have a limited budget, you've got spectacular features in here, a well-established address so that people will know where you are. And you want a view too? Like, how much do you have? Like, you got three mil? Because I can do it. You know? And they were like, oh, we're gonna call you. We love that. I guess the SAS is what they were looking for. So off I went and they didn't call. So. <laughs> My husband, who was on my boy, my boyfriend at the time, he's like, yeah, that's the business. You know, he, I had heard about all the cattle calls and stuff like that. So months went by and they kept auditioning. And I heard that they had auditioned something like 400 people in the city. And then in February, so that was September, October. And then in fe February um, of 2006, so that was 2005, they called me back. And I remember exactly when it was and where I was because I was at the bottom of the driveway standing in slush in my heels. I was just getting into my car. And uh, there was this British voice on the other end of the phone. Yes, do you remember uh, auditioning for this? I'm like, yeah, I'm a realtor. I don't audition for things. I auditioned for one thing. Yeah, I remember. <laughs> and he says, well, I'm the new series producer and I'm going through all the recordings and I'd really like to bring you back in for another audition. And now I'm thinking in my head, you know, Gary had said, oh, sometimes there were like 100 people there. So I said, well, how many people are you calling back? Like, I was totally off this now. This is months later. I wasn't really sure I wanted it at the beginning of it. Now my dad had had a stroke and, and you know, that was a lot to deal with. He was bedridden and um, had a lot on my plate. So I said, oh, I don't know how many people are you calling back? And he said, well, five or six. I said, five or six hundred? And he's like, no, five or six. <laughs> And I was just going, I was leaving, I was working for a big franchise, a uh, real estate franchise at that time, and they were celebrating 100 years. So I was flying to San Francisco that day or the next day. And he said, you have to come in right away. And I'm like, okay, well, next week, because I'm just flying to San Francisco. He goes, no, 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 tomorrow, today, tomorrow. I'm like, no, 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 I'm going away. Like, we're going, like, I am going, I've been planning this, it's all paid for. I recruited yeah. other agents in my office, we're going. He's like, he could not believe this because in that world, like you call somebody and say, I've, you've got a second audition. They're like, I'll, I'll like stop moving trains to get there. Yeah. So then he found out that um, I we, we had a friend in common and she was a top producer across Canada and she was going to be there. So he says, okay, I'll wait for you. So off I went and I knew of her, but I didn't really know her. So surely I'm in San Francisco and I get a phone call from my friend and he's like, what are you doing? And I'm like, well, I don't know. I was just going to go to Nordstrom's. <laughs> He said, um, oh, come to my hotel. I'm having champagne in the lobby. I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah, that sounds good. I, I, who are you with? And he mentioned this woman's name. And I said, okay, that I got to go talk to her. So I went there. We had champagne. And she said, don't do it. <laughs> I'm like, okay, that's fine. I don't want to do it. I, nah, I don't want to do it. Okay. So I had made up in my mind that I didn't want to do it. So during this time, I was using a BlackBerry a long time ago, right? blackberry and at that time i didn't have it set up so uh properly so if somebody had my computer on all the messages the emails would dump onto the computer and not come to the phone so i missed an email from the series producer saying oh you've got to come back i'm really gunning for you and it's between you and another girl but i really want you and you got to come you got to come you got to come in my mind i'm like okay that's yeah you know, i'm just gonna tell him forget it had my, you know, uh, mm -hmm. these real estate conventions are like drinkathons, right? Yeah. So that plus the jet lag, I get home, I get a message about my dad being in bad condition. So I have to go there. So I, I, I ask my assistant, can you please call him and tell him the thanks, but no thanks, because like, I don't know how long I'm going to be in this yeah. party, right? So she calls and leave him a message and then he calls me back. In those days, you had to leave the phone in the car when you went into a mm -hmm. hospital. Mm -hmm. He calls me back, leaves me a message. 
I understand the severity of the situation, but we really need to do the audition. I'm like, you clearly don't understand the severity of the situation. But my husband said, welcome to the business, babe. <laughs> so turns out my dad was fine. I was the one that needed help because of the jet lag and the several days of drinking. Mm -hmm. um, so I went, I did the audition and I got hired, but like, Nobody was more surprised than I was that I got hired for this. I had no training. So uh, that's how that began. And at the beginning, I was extremely nervous on camera. Sure. And the top 20 seconds and last 20 seconds of the show is scripted. The rest, thankfully, was not scripted because I'm not an actress. Yeah. So it was just me. As soon as I could learn that I just needed to focus on my clients everything happened. And because I was genuine, it resonated yeah, sure. with the viewer and they loved the show after yeah. the fifth rough cut. So HGTV Canada and HGTV US are separate companies, but they're friendly. So this was a Canadian production. And when they sent it down to the US for them to see it after five rough cuts, they said, Oh no, we need the show, which was amazing. Apparently that was unheard of. So you know, the show was doing really well and it wasn't very long before it was, I think it came out in the top three. And then wow. it just skyrocketed to number one. And the show was, you know, incredibly powerful for people because I would get cards and emails and letters, snail mail that uh, people would send me from around the world, Finland and all these Latin American countries, all, like around the world. Oh, it showed in like 136 countries or something wow. about how I helped them in some way, which Neat. was so incredibly gratifying. Yeah because it's not easy. That is not an easy job. It's not glamorous and it is not easy. So every time I was like, Oh, I got to stop this. I get an email or something from someone that was really grateful and showing me a different perspective of what I was doing. And that essentially mm -hmm. fed my soul. And that's yeah. what kept me going for, you know, 130 some odd episodes with property virgins. Then from there, I wanted to leave property virgins. I was done. Like how many times can you say you can buy stainless steel appliances? It doesn't affect the value of the house <laughs> or, yeah. you know, you can take wallpaper down because, you know, I've done it. You've probably done it too, Connie. Yeah, right. Yeah. Worse, <laughs> worse, worse. So uh, it was big in the eighties. <laughs> so um, I had become aware of a statistic that at that time, one in four buyers was a single woman. Mm -hmm. So you go, okay. So, the, you know, half our families and then, a quarter are women and a quarter are single men. No, that's not true. 24, now written Canada is about 23%. It fell a little bit in the US after the market um, crisis, mm -hmm. the market crisis. Uh, but right now it's about 23% in Canada is a single woman buying a house compared to 10% is a single man buying a house. So wow. that is a very intriguing statistic. For sure. And it's been out there, you know, NAR reported it. That's the first time I heard it. And, and, and there are a lot of differences the way a typical woman buys and a typical man buys. And, you know, I'm stereotyping here, please forgive me, but I have 25 years experience doing this. So I've drawn my own conclusions. Um, and I, and I don't fit, you know, I'm not a round peg in a round hole. So trust me, I don't mean that everybody fits the same round hole, but uh, I decided that this needed to be explored. So when I quit property virgins, I, thought about it for a while and I said, I really want to broach the subject of women buying real estate because I remember my aunt telling me that she couldn't even get a credit card on her own. Mm -hmm. She was a single woman. She had a career. She lived at home with her parents because, you know, Italian immigrants, that's what you had to do. And she wanted to buy a condo. And um, this is a long time ago. Condos were new. And I think it was in Hawaii somewhere. And she, cause she worked with an airline. So she had been out there. She said, this is great, great opportunity. She walked into the sales office and the builder refused to sell her one wow. unless she had a male co-signer, even though she had money. So I remember hearing these stories. So it wasn't that long ago that mm -hmm. women couldn't, couldn't buy a house. You know, you couldn't get credit. You couldn't get them. You could buy a house if you had cash. Everyone would think you're weird. There was a great sex in the city episode where Miranda wants to buy, not Miranda, one of the one of the girls there she wanted to buy the one that was a lawyer she wanted to buy her own place and it was a really well done episode i i i give props to them kudos to them because they really did hit some of the subjects uh right on mm -hmm. and it's 
not much has changed since then. So I did the show. We only did one season. It was only in Canada. Then it went to Netflix around the world. And it was really well received. When it went to Netflix, I was getting, again, calls from uh, wow. Australia. And it really, really resonated with women, which is what I wanted it to do. So when we were casting for the show, I was on a very popular radio show one morning and a woman was listening to me as she drove to work and she was in her late thirties and she had a great profession. She was a great career. And I was talking about women buying their own homes. And she's like, what women buy their own homes? Why didn't I think of that? So she called me and she bought her own home. Now it was really eye opening to me. I mean, I was raised by immigrants. She was raised by immigrants of a different mm -hmm. nationality. But I could see a lot of similarities. So all of the people I worked with on the show and in my real estate business, I could connect to them on some level. We could connect because I've had a lot of the same experiences or I've worked with people who had those very same experiences. So as this went on and on, I said, there is a massive need for this. And wherever I went, if, if people had seen the show, the women were like, you know what? It's really good to see such a, a positive thing about women on TV, strong women doing it for themselves and taking control of their destiny. And I really liked that. So I started thinking about it more and more and more. And I decided that I needed to write a book about it. So I did that. So I really started doing some research. And as I researched, I was working on myself. I realized mm -hmm. that, you know, all these false beliefs that we take on, not that they don't even have to be taught to you. You can, you, you and I, Connie, can look at the same situation and my perception is going to cause one belief and your perception is going to cause perhaps a totally different belief. So all these false beliefs create your behavior, your, your actions, right? So as I was doing this research, I was working on myself, which meant I was, be, I was able to offer better help to a wider range of people. And I just kept writing and writing. And then I thought, okay, so I've read some really great books out there before self-help books and then they end up on the shelf so I call them shelf help and I said <laughs> I know a book isn't enough so then I, I I made recordings and I created an online course and then I, I know even one step further two steps further actually there's a community that you can be part of where you know women really in this community we can really champion for each other and we have shared experiences and we talk about how did you guys overcome this or this is how I overcame that obstacle because it doesn't matter who you are and what budget you're in and what you do for a living or what your age may be or where you live, yeah. you are going to experience some obstacles when it comes to buying your own place. It doesn't matter. Even, even as a couple and a family, even a savvy buyer is going mm -hmm. to have to overcome some obstacles. And if these obstacles are in your head, if the, if it's part of your mindset, that's where this work comes in and this work, hadn't been done in any major way by realtors, like realtors for your clients. I mean, you can only go so far. We're not trained coaches, right? We're not psychologists, but this is 80% of the battle. So I yeah. started thinking, you know, there's three groups of women that would benefit the, the women that are ready to go. They've saved, they planned, they're ready. They're ready to start looking and they, they think they're going to buy a place in a week. Those mm -hmm. women are going to experience mm -hmm. obstacles. I don't say this lightly. I've worked, as I said, 25 years. It's going to happen. There's going to be something externally or internally. Gotcha. The second group of women is the the type of woman who, hmm, just starting to think about it. Should I? Could I? Would I? Buy mm -hmm. my own place. Yeah. So this is really beneficial for them as well. Mm -hmm. And then the third group of women is the one that I really, 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 really want to reach. And those are the ones who have never allowed themselves the opportunity to dream about it, to even think about it, to even entertain the thought because they're so steeped in uh, their false beliefs that came from tradition, for example, that they won't allow themselves to break against tradition. So I guess you could say I was lucky because my aunt, you know, the, the maverick, she went out and she bought a Mustang with her own money. And, you know, she she traveled the world with the airlines and stuff. So she and she got married late in life. I don't know how late it was. It was probably 28. But back then that was late. Right. <laughs> so she kind of showed me that it was possible that I 
didn't have to live inside that little box. Yeah. You know, you bring up so many different things and I've been writing some notes, but I wanted to go back to a couple of things because, you know, okay, so let's just talk about first your journey is, so you're a realtor, um, you're a realtor in a very successful company doing, you know, fantastic things. You get this call out of the blue uh, to, to host a television show, which is amazing in itself. Of course, everybody's going to be saying, ah, how did, you know, that's just amazing. But what I hear you saying and I saw in your magic in your face was once you realized um, that all, that what you needed to do was be you and talk to those people as they're your first time home buyers, look at all of the, the magic and, and why you're such a successful realtor, it all actually came out. And I wanted to share that and I wanted to reiterate that because I feel like it's really important for people who are watching to see that that's what having the magic of doing what you really love to do is all about. Like you just, you looked at the ceilings and said, Oh my God, look at this amazing place. And then you started putting the pieces together. And this was a, a, a planned thing. This was not people that you were taking out to look at houses. But once you started looking at it that way, that's exactly when your magic came out. So I wanted to share that up for a minute because, or reiterate and, and uh, re um, address that because I think it's so important for people to see just that magic going on because you know whatever your specialty is in the world that magic is exactly where your spot is and once you can tap into that that's what keeps things you know keeps you in the happy place where your hair is on fire all the time which is phenomenal and um, it's a win-win it's a win for me and it's a win for the client right when you're passionate 100 percent. yeah yeah and i mean in that case for the show which is exactly why you probably got the the part because of exactly that you, you know you felt exactly where you needed to be but what i like next is so at some point you said all right well i'm doing this real estate career with this large you know inter, uh, this national firm international firm and um i see this spot that really needs attention so you i didn't stop doing real estate but you decided to address this particular segment of the population. And one thing I find very interesting, and I found it when we when we first worked together offline as well, that um, how many very successful, very um, well-versed ladies don't ever jump into the real estate ring because of all of this preconceived piece of what should be happening and what they can and can't do. And by the way, I wanted to point out that we did get a comment from... Um, Gary McRae, who said fantastic to you. So I wanted you to see that. Um, so, you know, that we are have people watching. And if you're watching and you want to talk, get pop in the comments and I can pop them up on the screen for Sandra to see. But um, so talk to us a little bit about that, because I think that you obviously found that there is a huge segment of the ladies population that uh, don't give themselves the ability to think that that's even possible in, in, a, in a real world. Yeah, I think. What I learned was it was much more common than I would like to think that yeah. women in particular do not feel worthy. Yeah. And that is sad. Yeah, that, for sure. That, that is something we have to address. So we then you decided to write a book and you decided to do an audio series for people to try to be able to digest some of the information that you were able to discover and to share that this isn't the, the way that it should be. And these are all the opportunities, some opportunities that are available. So talk to us a little bit more about that book and what you have there. So the book is called Homeworthy, How to Buy Your Dream Home with Ease. Because I think a lot of people overestimate how difficult it is or... On the other hand, they underestimate the work that they have to do to be able to be the in the position to pull the trigger and cross that finish line. So many analogies there. But um, I've seen women who have saved up a lot of money for their down payment, planned on this and saved and budgeted and, you know, sacrificed that girl's trip or whatever it was they, so that they could save up, up enough money for their down payment. And this is actually what triggered the book, the writing of the book. I worked with a couple of women over a few years who had done this and they saved like I'm talking $200,000 after tax dollars, which is really hard to do, especially in an expensive city like Toronto. Mm -hmm. So when I met with them, I thought, wow, this is great. These girls know exactly what they're doing. And uh, off we went. But what became apparent was a few things. One, they had focused their intentions for so long on saving up the money to see if they could buy real estate mm -hmm. that now it was really hard to let 
per se let go of that money, get it out right. of the uh, savings account or wherever they had mm -hmm. it, and now apply it to their dream home. Yeah. So that was one fear or one objection that I kept coming across as I worked with women. Uh, it's like we didn't shift the goal properly to home ownership because through home ownership, there's wonderful opportunity for wealth building, right? Yeah. So the other thing is when you're working with real estate clients, quite often they have a support group who give them advice. So each of these women would have gone to their uh, support group. And, you know, when you when you talk to one of them, I know went to their dad and dad is a protector, right? Mm -hmm. For the, your entire life, dad has been in a protector role and it's been a father daughter uh, interaction. Mm -hmm. You guys are both used to being in that frame of mind. Mm -hmm. So when you come to him and you say, now I've saved up my $200,000 and I'm ready to buy a condo and dad experiences something. Dad could have experienced, oh, my little girl's all grown up or, oh my gosh, I just read in, in you know one of the newspapers that the condo market is gonna crash and she's gonna lose all her money. Whatever it was that he was feeling, her interpretation of him not, you know, jumping up and down and saying, yay, rah, rah, his boom, bah, is, oh, I shouldn't do it. Do it, yeah. I shouldn't do it. I'm going to fail. Uh, I'm not good enough. I'm not worthy. It's a mistake. Oh, my gosh. So one girl in particular that I worked with over the years, she had addressed all of the issues. She wanted a, a one plus one. That's what we call a, a one bedroom condo that has a den. So she wanted the den. A lot of these dens are big enough to raise a child in. Okay. They're called a den and not a bedroom because they don't have a window or a closet, but they're big. They can be bigger than some of the bedrooms I've seen. So, okay, that's cool. You've got enough, more than enough money to, to get what you want, but she wanted something a little bit bigger than your typical condo, which was fine when we found it and we had been working together for three months. And I know that a lot of people have, this perception of realtors that we're just salespeople. We just want the sale. We just want the sale. You, you know, what you want is an important, I need the sale. Well, I don't work that way. Yeah. So working with her for three months, we saw the prices going up significantly. It was a really weird time in this area for that product. Uh, every week it was going up. So if you missed, missed one, or if you lost in multiple offers, we have multiple offers here, then the next week you're paying three or $5,000 more. Like it was that crazy. So she yeah. witnessed this and she lost a couple of times in offer. So she knew the drill. So this one came out and she had increased her budget a little bit, but it was far less than what she could have paid. She could have afforded easily. Right. I mean, this, this woman was a champ. She saved up 200 grand renting. She wasn't living at home. She was out renting. Wow. So when we found the perfect one, she started to get scared because now mm -hmm. it was real. Mm -hmm. And she's like, well, well, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, what if I have a baby? Well, that's why we're looking at a one bedroom with a really big den. Like we've addressed that already next. Right. So I know this is happening. Like I know her head was starting to spin and I was working through it. We had already gone through all of these questions. She had answered them herself. So I was yeah. just repeating the answers that she had given to me, but she, she was really, really scared. So when it came down to it, she held back a little bit of money and I'm talking, she, bid about $5,000 less than the statistics showed that it would sell for. And she lost it by 3000. Mm -hmm. So she could have bought it. But the, the heartbreaking part of this is that that year, that particular product in that particular area went up a hundred thousand dollars, more than a hundred thousand dollars in one year. So yeah. she lost that. And in Canada, that's tax free. That's tax free money. So my mm -hmm. heart broke for her for that. The other thing is, because she wasn't properly prepared, I thought she had been. So it was, you know, my mistake as well. I should have asked deeper questions. She wasn't properly prepared. So she essentially, she allowed herself to fail. Okay, she made a mistake, but then yeah. she pulled the trigger. She said, no, no, it's not the right time. Condos are going to fail. Condos yeah. are going to go down there. There's a, a, you know, I read in a newspaper, blah, blah, blah. My dad said this, that, that. Now, you know what? I mean, you're going to listen to the people around you. I get that. But mm -hmm. she she was going from person to person to person, article to article to article to find the mm -hmm. answer she wanted to hear. Yeah, of course. And that's the problem. Wow. So now what I would do is I would ask her to go into sort of a seven levels deep exercise and determine her reasons why she's ready, why yeah. she wants to buy. 
Well, what I love about this and you sharing these stories is this is incredible because you're, I mean, I don't think it's probably not just women, but I think because of yeah. the societal pressures in that, in that particular, um, uh, in the, in that gender, it, it adds a whole different layer of things that you've seen to been able to tap into. And from that, you decided I'm going to attack this by not only your realtor side, and you make a very good point that people do have preconceived notions about realtors. And let me just share with everyone having my you know previous career being uh, in an ancillary business of the real estate world. I mean, you need to do your research and make sure that the realtor, not only the realtor is is smart and working for you, but it's also somebody you can work with because personalities are different. You could have the, the top rated realtor in the area, but if they're not somebody that you can work with, it's not going to work. So, um, so I appreciate and respect that you talked about that. But what I like is that you have seen uh, something that was a trend, you did some research, and now you figured out how you can share your expertise and your research with the populace, and then how you can fine tune that to your real estate career. So fast forward just a little bit, because we're just about out of time, and I certainly don't want to go without um, sharing you now, but you, not only do you have um, this book that you've created, this niche in your real estate business, but now you don't work for this um, uh, national real estate company. You decided that you would better serve the community that you're in and the people that you work with by creating your own brokerage. So tell us a little bit about that for a minute. Yeah. So I went out and I got my broker's license so that we could open a brokerage because I um, mostly driven by the fact that people were looking for me and it was hard to find me. And when you have a team and, and at that time it was just difficult for them to know that they were calling my team cause I was still doing the show uh, or, you know, other projects and I can't service everyone. So um, by opening the brokerage, they were able to find me more easily. And actually uh, they would just say, can I get someone on Sandra's team? Because they knew how I worked yeah. I, I was actually a real person. I wasn't just a, you know, a name, a company name. And mm -hmm. if they, these people were on my team, then they had to perform at my level of integrity, honesty, and knowledge, right? Yeah. And experience. So I love it. I love it. Tell us about your brokerage. Where are you located? Uh, how can people get in touch with you to find out more about you and your book and your brokerage and how they could work with you if they wanted to give me all of that goodness. I'm going to put it. Okay. So there's the easiest website to find everything on is sandrinamato.com. Sorry, it's a really long name, but <laughs> sandrinamato.com will get you to the real estate, but it also gets you to uh, the book homeworthy and the courses. And you can reach out to me and, you know, we can chat, we can arrange a phone call to see mm -hmm. if, you would, if I think you would benefit, I don't, the same with, um, hiring a realtor or working with a client. If I don't think I can benefit you, I'm not going to try to take your money from you. You know what I mean? I'm going to maybe give you guidance. And I've done this many times guide on where you would be best served. So that's the best place. Sandrina Um, and all my contact information is there. Excellent. That is exciting. And because we have uh, this amazing lady who is so generous with her time, her help and her information, she is offering you guys a once in a lifetime special. Sandra, tell us about what that is. Well, first of all, I want to give away a copy of the book Ooh. and uh, access to the course. So we're going to do this by how, Connie? We're going to let, let them open well, I'm going to let people comment in the comments below. They can comment either, uh, as you know, we're streaming live on Facebook, live on YouTube, and we will also be posting on LinkedIn, tagging Sandra on both Facebook and LinkedIn. Um, make comments. Comments in the um uh, in the comment section of both Facebook and or LinkedIn um, for the next 24 hours. We're going to cut it off after the next 24 hours. And then in those 24 hours, uh, once we get those comments um, that who's interested in, in being registered for that, Sandra's going to pick a name uh, tomorrow afternoon and we'll notify whoever is the winner and get your contact information. And something I want to say is this is a passion project for me. Um, this is not something like I had to do this to pay my mortgage or whatever. I see a need for it. I see that women can benefit. And I'm sorry, guys. I mean, you're welcome to come too. I, I'm a woman. My experience as woman is female and I was raised by immigrants. And, you know, this is why I can speak on this so freely. Uh, but you're welcome as well. Uh, I just didn't want anybody to feel like they 
they were being left out. But I, I yeah. want women to know that they're worthy and I want women to empower themselves no matter what is happening in your life. You can empower yourself through home ownership. Even if you don't add investment properties to your investment portfolio, just owning a home can be very lucrative for you. And But in order to get there, there's some work that we have to do together, which is 80% mm -hmm of the quotient here the other 20 percent is how to and if you hire a good realtor like connie says and they have a great network of other trusted professionals the how to mm -hmm. you don't even have to worry about it's the 80 percent that is either going to make you successful or fail and i've watched women do both so give us uh, as we as we are getting ready to to part from you and which is, i'm really sad about because there's so much goodness here give us your go-to piece of advice uh you know what has gotten you through when you had some of the craziest going on because we're talking about entrepreneurship um and because we're talking about owning real estate i mean all of these different pieces uh give us your go-to piece of advice that piece that says to you you know when i get stuck this is where i go to you know the biggest thing and it's been a lot out there in the media right now is understanding what you want and why you want it. Oh, like okay. if you ask them, you know how long it took me to figure out two years ago what I wanted. And mm -hmm. it brought me to this point right here is working with women because I see that there's a need and that I can affect change. Um, but what I wanted was really a difficult question to answer. And then why? Why do I want that? So where, whatever it is, whether it's business, whether it's setting a goal, a, you know, setting your dream home, why do you want that? Go seven levels deep. It's a well-known exercise. And just keep ask, asking yourself why until you're like really seven levels. Because at that point, then you've stripped away all those layers of the onion, which is there because of your conditioning. And it's really hard to do it on your own. So if you can just keep going seven layers deep, seven levels deep, keep working on this. It's difficult. Be brutally honest with yourself. Lock yourself in a room where nobody will disturb you at least for half an hour. You will get emotional about this. And once you are emotional and you start to strip away those layers, then you're getting to your true essence, your true being and write it down and know it and guard it. Don't share it with anyone. Just guard it. And anytime you are distracted or you feel like procrastinating or, you know, pull out that why and boy, it will motivate you if you've done the exercise properly. So I hope that you will because it's life altering. I love that you say go seven layers deep because, you know, there's so much talk about finding your why, figuring it out. That whole exercise is phenomenal. But going seven layers deep is real because it's not just, oh, I want to make more money. Why? Because I want to be able to enjoy the finer things or, oh, I want to live in a big house. Why? You know, I mean, it, I like the seven layers deep. That's fantastic that you brought that up because it requires people to really dig into what that really means to them, not to everyone else in the world. And it doesn't matter what anybody else thinks. Sharing it with everybody else sometimes can be your, to your detriment because other people have opinions about what that should be. As we've talked about the whole half an hour here, we've been talking. And, I, and, and if anybody wants to email me or Connie to ask me for my seven levels deep um, exercise sheets, I'd be glad to email them to you. Excellent. I don't know how you want to orchestrate that, Connie. Um, yeah, that'd be fine. If I, if, uh, if somebody wants to comment in the comments, we, you know, I can get those to Sandra. Um, you can also reach out to her through her website, which we posted in the comments as well. So you should be able to see that Sandra. We also had a comment from, um, Natalka, uh, awesome yeah. interview, Sandra, have a good day. So I'm sure that's somebody that you follow or that follows you. So I just Hi, wanted to share that. I appreciate that everybody is commenting. That's really fun. And Sandra, I, as we wrap up, I just can't thank you enough for being with us. Your insight, your energy, your passion for what you believe in is so infectious. And, and we all got so much out of it. I really appreciate you taking the time to be with me today. Thanks, Connie. What a great opportunity. I'm forever grateful. Thank you. Oh, fine. Thank you. And again, I really enjoyed working with you. And, and guys, if you need to find Sandra, or you want to, you can reach out to me individually, message me. You can also go to her website, which I've placed in the comments. As I said, we're live on Facebook. We're live on YouTube right now, but we will be putting a link again back into YouTube and uh, excuse me, back into Facebook. I'll be adding it to LinkedIn. Well, I'll be tagging Sandra so she can share it with everybody. So you guys can get to her or get to me if you want to register for an opportunity to win her free book and her course. If you want to just talk to her and, and get some more information, try to get through some of these pieces that you may be struggling with. This is a great opportunity to talk to a lady who has 
lots of different experiences to share with you and so much energy and um, information. And so take this opportunity to do that. And if you want to reach it out to me, you can certainly reach me, ConnieFuchel.com, where we can sit and talk if you want for 15 minutes or so about the strategy that I helped Sandra build. And we did a 12 month strategy together and uh, she is implementing that and killing it. She, before we got into it, I have to give her a little bit of, um, a little bit of comment about that because when we first started working together, she's like, I don't think we can put this together and put 12 months worth of stuff. And she said, I don't have that much information. Well, we did it in a really record time and it was a lot of fun and, and the stuff, she taught me a lot of cool things. So it was a really fun exercise. So great guys, please reach out Thank to Connie. You. It's Thank so you. So great. You can reach me on my website. Um, just reach out to me and we can sign up for a 15 minute conversation and see how we could work together. So until next time, Sandra, I gotta thank you again so much. We'll see you guys next time on Entrepreneurial Live Interviews with Connie Fuchsa. I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.